Ho, baby. We're back. I, I said we wouldn't be back, Zach. I said this would be it. Last post game show after things went off the freaking rails. But here we are again, everyone. The Orioles just have the audacity to walk it off, to get everyone fired up. And um, they steal, stealing a series is, is a generous way to put it, Zach. Yeah. I mean, I'll, hey, hand up. I'll be the first to say it. the Orioles should not, not have won that game, especially not with Cole Reagan wheeling and dealing the way he was. Puts on a master class. Out shows Corbin Burns, not easy to do, but Cole Reagans absolutely shows out. But the birds don't quit. That's the one thing you could say a lot of things about the birds. Those birds don't quit. No, they really don't. And, and I think, where do we want to start with this? Um, first off, you're right. Hats off to Cole Reagans. Tremendous. I think people are seeing why. He hit, hits up to 98 with a cutter and really good off speed, his changeup was dynamite. And then the Orioles started to scratch and claw in the eighth, and you could start to feel something change. Something's brewing. They get Cole out of the game, but the Orioles can't get anything going in the seventh, right? But there's a reason why the Royals traded for him. His his 12 starts in KC were Cy Young-esque, and he showed it tonight, and everyone's going, oh, man, the birds are asleep. The bat's terrible. Well, guess what? These guys just kept grinding and grinding. And once again now, Zach, the Orioles have now their second come-from-behind victory. And can we actually go to the other starting pitcher here for a second, Corbin Burns? Yeah. yeah. Not his best overall stuff. Gave up some hits. You know how many runs he gave up? Two. Mm -hmm. I, your chance. I, would, I would like to think if – Corbin Burns off game in the rain is him going five and two thirds of two run ball that you, you take that any day of the week. Like you said, kept it, kept the team in it, gave the boys the ability to keep battling, keep it close, not feel like it was over. And then that's all this, that's all this offense needs. You know, there was a lot of concern of, you know, can they get anything going? We couldn't even get a runner on base, let alone runs for a few innings. Not even a few innings, about seven of them. But they just keep scratching and clawing, and eventually something's going to give. I think the most impressive thing was the patience in the ninth inning. You know, two big mm -hmm. walks, it's, it's or a walk and then a single. It's hard, you know, for Mountcastle. He rakes lefties. So going up there, you're thinking, hey, one swing, I can tie this, but for him to sit there and meticulously just take pitches and make close calls, beautiful. And I do want to give a huge shout out Jordan Westberg, first career sacrifice bunt. So, a uh, little applause there. That's it's the little things. He's the home run hero two days ago. It's very easy for you in that situation to go, Hey, I just walked it off with the two run shot two days ago. Let me swing the bat. No questions asked, goes out there does what it takes for the team to win the ball game. Love to see it, Jason. Yeah, Jason, shout out Jason for sticking it out. It's going to the game through it all. Boom. Yeah, and to your point here for a second, okay, w with the guys, the fellas, you know, this Royals team's scrappy, super scrappy. This is why, like, people are, like, low-key picking them to possibly make some noise in the AL Central. You saw Garcia, really competitive at bats. If you guys didn't know who Bobby Wood Jr. is, one, you should go watch the breakdown we did of Gunnar Henderson and Bobby Wood Jr. The dude's a stud, but Salvador Perez is still able to put a, put together good at bats. Like This is a very, very solid Royals team. Everyone's going away. Are they just going to run on the Orioles all year long? The Royals just run, period. Like yeah. they, they that's, that's what they like to do, and, and they, they try to – cause commotion they try to get you sped up and look they did their part but the Orioles found a way and for for Jordan Westberg what I love with him is yeah hit the jack but he'll do any anything to help the team win and tonight the guy that really made the biggest difference James McCann and yeah. who remember that ominous tweet I put out not ominous sorry wrong word but the cryptic tweet I put out yeah right when I got back from spring training I told you this and you kind of went oh like you weren't really that impressed Zach well, the tweet for those that aren't aren't familiar, I said I came back from spring training 
and everybody that I talked to had one player that they kept saying, we love this guy. We believe in this guy. He is going to come up for us in big situations. We don't know where we would be without this guy. You want to take a guess, Zach, or you know the answer. James, yeah, James McCann. Mm. Yeah. Mm. And, and look who comes up in the big situation. You know, two outs, bases juiced, and just comes up and gets it done. And that's the big theme of the Orioles this year. When people's names are getting called, they're producing. You know, vibes going into the off day, I will say, feeling a lot better at four and two than you would at three and three. So, like you said, stealing the series is kind of an understatement. Honestly, I'm just feeling good that after yesterday with all the, you know, commotion of Orioles were hitting the cover off the ball. 12 balls hit over 100 miles per hour exit velocity. Only two get end up being hit. And early in this game, it kind of looked to be the same with Adley and Ryan Mountcastle. I believe even James McCann all had balls over 95 miles an hour off the bat right at people. And you just felt like they were right there. You were like, they're, they're getting it. They just need one or two breaks where they get the ball in the gap. They're, they're getting the contact, just needs to find the grass. And would you look what happens? And real quick for everyone, uh, I had to look it up. The Royals stole the third most bases in all of baseball last year. So like you said, this team just runs. This is how they produce runs. They're going to get on first, and they're like, let me get to second and let me get to third. Yeah, and I mean, even their at-bats, they were, they were pissing off the pitchers, being like, why can't I just put you away? Just go down easily. That would make everything better, but this is a professional team. And for all the ones, again, for everyone that's complaining also about, well, we understand the, the prospects down at AAA are raking, right? I get it. They're mm -hmm. they're they're studs. Playing in fifty some degrees, maybe forties. It's raining. It's you know, bleh. but it's not like the Royals were putting up these massive numbers. By the way, you know what I mean. It's just the fact that the Orioles bats weren't getting the hit that they needed at the right time. They were close, but they couldn't put it together until the last two innings. And again, master class for the Orioles to delay the game five hours. I mean, that's just textbook, Zach. That's how you really get you – That that's what separates the good teams from the great, is understanding the Royals are going to break down the eighth and ninth inning, and here we are. Here we it are. It actually – it is crazy. Uh, I want to get the stat right. They'll probably be a little wrong, but of the, I guess, now 19 runs that the Royals have given up this year, it's now 13 have come – or I guess 14 of 20 now – have come in the eighth or ninth inning. So the whole time the Orioles – and the Orioles knew this. Don't think the Orioles didn't know that that was the weak spot. That was where you had to get to Kansas City. The Orioles knew, hey, if we just stick around there, if we just hang in there, you're going to put the pressure on Kansas City's back of the bullpen. And Will Smith, although he's a guaranteed World Series, he's been on, what, the last three World Series winners? Mm -hmm. He uh, he didn't have it tonight. You know, he, he was missing all over the zone. But they stuck with them, and James McCann, when it matters the most, won the one-on-one -on -one matchup. And and leadoff walks are killer, killer. And it really came back to haunt the, the Kansas City Royals. And the fact of also, it was an easy walk. Pitches were out of the zone. Yeah. It didn't even give Mountie an opportunity to really go after any balls, right? So things are going. You're moving. You're feeling good. Uh, also, by the way, uh, Let's go from Boise, Idaho. Let's go. Let us know where you're Aren't tuning you know. in from. I saw Tori's down in Florida. Um, let us know where you're tuning in, where you're celebrating, where you're excited. And we were just going to do our regular show tomorrow, but we came on tonight because stop traffic, you know, exciting game. And here we are. Uh, Houston makes yeah. a great point, though, Zach. Yeah. He's, he's unreal. Every time. That's the one thing. I am so happy. I love watching Bobby Witt play. I'm so happy it's not going to be against the Orioles until we play them later. I'm glad he's out of Baltimore because, man, is it annoying to – he doesn't strike out much. I know uh, who uh, who got him twice yesterday. Uh, Cole Irvin actually got him twice, but he doesn't strike out much. He's going to battle at bats, and when he puts that ball in play, he's like Gunnar Henderson. He is full throttle. He is going to make you make a mistake, and if you – if you throw it away, you're a little too lazy with it. He's going to beat it out. He's going to go take extra bases. He's a menace and going to be a star in this league for a long time. Yeah, and also, I, before we get into that more, Rick, you took the words right out of my, oh, right out just, of my mouth here. 
There it is. If you guys are new to the channel, hit that like and subscribe button. For those who don't know about this, it's baseball season, so we're going to hit the ground running, obviously covering the Orioles, covering baseball in general. Um, some would say I've been around the game for a while, so we're going to cover a lot of baseball. We're going to cover some other sports, so realize when we do cover other sports on different streams, we will get you the Orioles content you want. That is a Ryan Ripken show guarantee. If not, you can hit Rocco right in the face. That's also yep. a guarantee from the Ryan Ripken show. Um, Spirit Bomb, again, there, there's so many there's so many little things, actually, Zach, before you get into this. I think when, when things go right for the Orioles, it takes multiple efforts to get there. And what I mean by that is it's not just Cano's clean inning, giving the Orioles a chance, obviously. But if you're looking at what Corbin Burns keeping the team in the game, yes, Bauman gave up the home run, but overall got three outs. Coulomb comes in, does his job. So when you're seeing this and this is adding up, you give yourself a chance. And then on offense, get on for the next guy. Get on for the next guy. Colton Kowser comes off the bench. Sometimes it's better to be lucky than good. And I think that Colton has had the right attitude. He had a good approach. And even though it was a little bit off the end of the bat, he earned that right there. He earned it. James McCann comes through. Gunner battles his ass off, gets the RBI. And then Adley Rutschman, great swing. And, and Hunter Renfro, I mean, tip your cap. That's a, Dude, that was I, unreal. That's one. I don't think you're going to see a better catch, tag, or pick, tag, and throw too many in baseball. And by the way, like I told people in a tweet, uh, I watched Hunter. I played in the Cal, uh, the Cowardkin Summer League. I know, terrible name for a summer league. But Hunter Renfro was playing there. He, he didn't go to the Cape. He just wanted to keep coming back there. And I remember watching him throw with the bazooka of an arm when I was I just coming out of high school. And I'm like, man, dude, like that is absurd. And I saw it multiple times. I'm like, okay, well, this is just becoming routine for him. And to see him do that, I wasn't surprised. But the, the level of difficulty of which he did that, I don't think people understand. Off balance, cannon, Bobby Witt, perfect scoop, tag, everything had to be precise, and it was. But still, the Orioles didn't give in. That could have been a moment that, that stopped him. No, no, no. Birds kept battling, Zach. Yeah, and I mean, like you said, I believe, I want to say it's 2017 or 18, Kevin Brown brought up on the broadcast, Hunter Renfro is the most assists in the past six, seven years for in the outfield. So, like you said, he's always had a cannon of an arm. If that play gets played out 10, 100 times with any other outfielder, Adley is safe 99 out of 100 times. But it took an unreal not only to keep his balance, but turn quickly and on a rope, get it to Bobby Witt Jr. who puts the tag down. Like you said, that's just a tip your cap in the moment. It kind of sucked. Like it was one of those you had to tip your cap, but you were like, why did you choose now to show off the cannon? But it all works out, you know? It, it, it just makes the story better, not a little bit more adversity. Yeah. You know, I was about to say another reference, which is definitely rip after dark. And it's going to have the same thing of the tight ass comments we had last post stream where everyone's like, oh, my goodness. Well, you guys lost your shit about it. But um, there's another reference that we talk about with someone that has a good arm, but we'll save it. We'll table it. Maybe give me another 10 minutes and then we'll figure out if that slips out. This um, is kind of funny. I'm not going to lie. He's not, you know. They all had moments, but like we said, the good teams, you find a way when it's not your best baseball, when things aren't always going your way. It felt like the Orioles couldn't, we couldn't buy a base runner for seven innings, but all you needed was a kink in the armor and here they come and boom. Yeah. And, and, and a thing for you guys to keep in mind as well, um, this is what the Orioles did last year. Gr great teams. Find ways to claw out extra victories. Yeah, we can say they stole the game. They definitely might have stole it away from the other team. I don't know why I keep saying stole, but they stole it. The thing, well, it's also, have you ever seen Beer Fest? They stole it. Sidetrack. When you take wins away from other teams, again, it, it's only going to keep putting you up there. And for the Orioles in this case, they went from losing the game to winning the series. A team that's also started off doing that this season was the New York Yankees against the Astros. They took three games that the Astros should have won. They took three of them coming back from behind, and that's that's massive for a team's morale, 
and ability as you get later in the season to know you're never out of the game. And for the Orioles, the same thing runs true. And for everyone saying about, well, you know, again, the offense, look at the game so far. If the Orioles give up four runs or less, which they've done, what, Zach, every single game this season so far? Uh, except for the first two games, yeah. Well, four or less? Oh, four or less. No, they, didn't they? Yeah, no, you are right. Yeah, I'm, I don't know yeah, why I, I know. four or more. I was like, what? I'm looking up I know. stats right Yes, you are correct. So, with that being said, if the Orioles pitching staff can allow four runs or less the rest of the season, and they're not going to, but if they were, you take that every single damn time because it's going to give you a chance to win. And you look at it, the Orioles couldn't put the bats together against with for Tyler Wells. So what? They did it for Dean Kramer. They couldn't put it together the night before with Cole Irvin on the mound. So what? They battled back and with Corbin Burns. They found a way. It's, it's winning baseball. It's successful. And then you can talk about the little things of the game. Down the stretch, Jordan Westberg executing down the stretch. Cedric Mullins being on second base and getting a great jump on McCann's base hit. Mm -hmm. And, yes, it was a wet ball out there, but he was going to make sure there was no chance yeah. that he was getting thrown out there. Like, as soon as the ball was said, I go, the game's over, because I know who's running the bases. I've seen said work. I know what he does. I know his preparation. That was a done deal. It's those little things that make a team win and can also cause a team to find ways to lose. Yeah. I mean, you talk about just Cedric being on second. And actually, for all those tuning in, if you watch a few uh, videos ago, Ryan did a breakdown on Gunnar Henderson and Bobby Witt Jr. It's something that you talked about about Gunnar there. It's not all speed. It's having the ability to read the baseball off the bat. And that's what said does incredible. Obviously, he's a speedster. He's going to get it done with his legs. But the moment that ball was hit, said knew where it was going, knew who was in right left field, and was like, I'm scoring on this. He takes the right angle, and boom, even a perfect throw that was going to be tough to get Cedric because the second it touched the bat, in his mind he was scoring, and he was going full throttle from that moment. He was full throttle, full, full, full torque. He was all the way in. He was ready to score and win that game for the team. Don't you smile? Yeah, I'm going to say some ridiculous shit. Um, it's you know I think it's the why more we do it. Well, I think the more this happens, I think the more like ball player in me comes out a little bit where you just kind of don't care. You just talk about it. You see it. You feel it. And sometimes when Ryan, I got to be professional, Ryan, and go on 105.7 The Fan and go on TV and do that, yeah, it will be a little bit more buttoned up. But this is fun because I can I feel the emotion as if I was being around with those guys because I have been in those moments with that. Um, hey, Kevin, you're right. Maybe you need to have 103 fevers more often. The team might yeah. benefit. A super but don't. sick. Yeah, super sick summer from Kevin could mean a magical summer for the Orioles, but we won't put you through that, Kevin. I, But, man, the more I think back on this, I actually just saw someone tried to call me out on Twitter saying that I gave up on the game four innings ago when I said I wasn't having fun. I was not. I was not having fun those first few innings because Cole Reagans was dismantling the lineup in a unreal fashion. I mean, he looked like a Cy Young player. But that's the beauty of baseball. You can sit there for seven innings and go, this is the worst thing ever. And then here we are 45 minutes later celebrating a 4-3 to two, four to three win. I mean, that's – some would say that's the magic of Orioles baseball. Yeah. Some would say, you know what, though? We'll sit there, uh, you know, when we're – when I was in the minors and we're playing and, and – um, you know, it'd always be like, hey, good time now. Good time good, good time to get something going. Or or like in the moment about like waking the bats up. You know, Buck Britton, who's a AAA manager, would always have some funny moments. He's like, now's a good time. It's like ninth inning. We have one hit the entire game. Now's a good time. Why why not now? And, and, and we just kind of – you laugh at it, but you're like, yeah, why not? And also, by the way, if you're tuning into this, I see a lot of people tuning into this, which we appreciate. Hit that like and subscribe or that follow on X. It's the Ryan Ripken Show breaking news special. We got at Zach Bollinger 18 for X, at Ryan Ripken for X. Give us a follow if you're on there on the YouTube channel. Hit that like and subscribe. We have a lot of coverage going on for the rest of the season. We usually do our normal live streams on Monday and Thursday with some sprinkling in on Sunday. But when the Orioles or something 
massive comes up in the sports world, we will hop on. And just so you guys know in the future, if you're like, well, wait a minute, this isn't all the baseball talk. We promise it's the Ryan Rick and Joe guarantee. We will get you a healthy dose of Orioles coverage, but we do like some other sports. We do cover the Maryland region. When football gets going again, we'll get going with that. But there are a lot of spiciness around baseball, which we love. And also, you know what we love, Zach? We love the fact that there are so many people around the country, around the world that love the Orioles. I saw some in Michigan. I've seen some out in California. I got some right here in Baltimore and Ellicott City. Um, one, I had to. I will say real quick. I did have to go double check this. The Norfolk Tides are winning twenty to eight right now. Yeah, I mean it's a it's a it's a juggernaut down there, and and rightfully so. But I, I want to tell people, no, no, don't let them in. Don't oh do it. my god! Bam, 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 bam. It's like the stone cold glass breaks, and then you see him just run down the. That that's the last thing that. Glass breaking sounds like bum, 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 bum. that was bum, 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 bum. That's, his, that's his theme song. <laughs> but you have to do the first for the glass yeah. to break. Yeah, Matt, why don't you go steal some more of my videos, Zach, and post them as well? <laughs> yeah, you made it super. I did tag you though. Tagged you. So many people asked me, they're like, "How's the tarp look?" And I'm like, "Dude, that was so oh, no, funny." It's like watching watching in real time, like the amount of people that were like, "Zach, we need an update." Like you and Ryan <laughs> come, come and see us, and I'm like this idiot He's also idiot. it sounds nothing like me it was clearly you talking in the video like i was like what are we doing yeah i've i feel like i have more of an annoying voice well oh, i was no gonna doubt. just post i was just gonna post like hold down and repost yours but it started with 20 seconds of you calling out ryan for having a fake uh pocket square and i was like no one's gonna yeah. wait until the end of that video yep that's on me sorry rip I just wanted to join for like five minutes, but I was getting, I was like having fear of missing out, you know, just kind of like sitting by myself at work, waiting, watching, hoping. Oh, hey, Brad, hey, you know, Brad, Brad joined him from his real account. Look at that. Yeah. Hey, hey, Brad, good kid. I mean, I believe I've texted Jeff. Thanks to Jeff saying, hey, man, again, I want to shake your hand. Amazing call. If you guys don't follow Jeff Arnold on X and don't listen to him, he's amazing. And also, we are gonna we haven't even clipped all that with Jeff either. Jeff Arnold, one of the play-by-play -play broadcasters for the Orioles, him and I actually were together in 2019. He was the radio guy and really everything for the Frederick, Frederick Keys in 2019. Talk about a time. We were terrible, but we had some electric calls on the air. I'll tell you what. Um, we will have Jeff on in the future, and it was funny. Jeff's talked about having these special moments, and now he gets to add to the repertoire. This season, he's had the Westberg. He had, obviously, tonight's McCann walk-off. Had the pleasure of calling John Means' no-hitter, which should have been a perfect game for a different time. And then yeah. the Adam Frazier double down the line last year to, to tie the game against Tampa. The Orioles go on to win the game. Um, just amazing stuff. It, it really – Jeff's amazing. Um, and there's so many talented people over there at uh, at Mass and that do a great job. Um, you know, one one comment I saw for a while here. I don't want to lose it for a second, and maybe I'll 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 try to work work some magic here. And we probably have a lot in common. But I saw something about Ben Verlander about yes, trying to collapse. Where is that? So far up here now because we got so much people just chatting it up, which we love. Hit that, but if you're chatting it up. Please hit that like and subscribe button. We know Rocco just got here, but do not. Uh, not hit the like button because Rocco's here. We'd appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, we are sorry about that. We, if if we the views sorry. or the likes go down, I will, you know, remove myself just because I love this show so much. What's up, Don? How's it going? Go O's. Don's man. Don's the man. Did you guys – I saw a comment in here about Norfolk right now. They're up 20, they're up 20 to yeah. 8. That's Thank, yeah, you missed that part. You missed that part of the combo. Yeah, yeah this team – I want to, well, let's bring up that because that's a hot topic right now. And we're going to talk about this tomorrow. And we also have, for those that are tuning in, we have two guests lined up for tomorrow. They're going to, some might um, cause Oriole fans to stir, but mm -hmm. I think you'd be interested to, to he, tune in because it's a name that Oriole fans have come to like to dislike. And then secondly, there's another Orioles I'd say reporter for a long time that I think a lot of people have enjoyed his work. We're excited about having both of these people on tomorrow. And then maybe we have some more things in the future.
So stay tuned. Make sure you have the notifications on. We will be doing that tomorrow, streaming Thursday. I think roughly we might go back to six tomorrow because there's no Orioles game. We will preview tomorrow the Pirates game and get that all sorted away and whatnot. So, guys, uh, the Norfolk Tides. Obviously, it's everybody in the lineup is hitting. Kevin says it locked on. Kevin Oster, Oyster Striker. Could the top four in Norfolk's lineup carry the five of us to a ring? Um, Maybe. The five of us. Oh. Well, I mean, with Rip, I guess you would technically – okay, there's another one there. Like, that's another ball player. I would lay down a nasty sack punt whenever needed. That's about all I'd bring. Maybe I walk once. That's all I got. Rocco, you're done. Yeah. There's no chance. I can – I mean, I – and on any team I'm on, I have the weakest arm, and I put me ninth. And like you said, I mean, we'd have to kind of fight over who's going to sacrifice bunt because I was a hell of a bunter when I played. But other than that, like I could barely get the ball out of the infield when I played little league ball, when I played junior legion, got cut my JV year because I was so bad. I think I made the team my freshman year because my dad knew the coach. I still believe that to this day. But you know what? I was a great statistician that year. Kept the box score and everything. So 30, 30 what? 30 strikeouts, 30 errors. 30, yes. 30, 30 tweets and 30 typos. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. Alva, today you gave me shit for one that all I, I was one letter off. I just I know. No, I, it was just because I saw I saw sad. three of the same tweet. It was like Zach Bollinger 18 has edited this, has edited this, has edited this. And I was like, Oh, well, yesterday dude, it was, so was funny. bad. When Eric called you out the other day and he's like, third time's a charm, Zach, or something like that. Like, I thought that was hilarious. It was so funny because he called me out while I'm sitting there, like, literally telling myself. And if you look at it, every single one of my tweets had less words. It was like, all this, like, paragraph at first, bunch of typos. Second one was a bunch of, like, two sentences, bunch of typos. Third one, I just said Ryan freaking Mountcastle. I was oh, so yeah. done with typing. Yeah, was I was like. Dude, that was great. You were just like you were so excited. You just didn't know what to tweet. It's fine. Zachary, yeah. Uh, please, please. We we need a lot of things. We need that sponsorship. We need a sunglass sponsorship because these shades, even though it might be nine thirty two on the East Coast, it is shining bright where I am right now. Hey guys, we haven't talked about this yet. This is actually a good time. We did talk about this in our own group chat. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I got here late. Did y'all discuss Mateo in center field? I was not happy about with that. You know what? We haven't discussed it, so let's talk about it right now. Um, I understand the thought process of why they would. Left-handed pitcher getting Mateo in the lineup, and they have said, quote-unquote, that they're experiment putting him out there in the outfield. Having said all of that, Mateo is still not an outfielder first, and when you're playing in a rainy game, weather weird, it's not necessarily ideal. Not that he's not a good enough athlete to go out and play, obviously. But personally, I actually would have liked seeing Colton Kowser out there because of the fact that, hey, had two hits the day before, throw him out there. He's comfortable in the outfield. And especially with the weather, we saw yesterday with Ryan O'Hearn. Again, I think Ryan O'Hearn can play that position, but when you have weather and you haven't been out there a lot so far this year, it, it's a more challenging situation. Um, but we know, Zach, that uh, Hyde likes to play matchups. And in that case, Mateo, if he's going to get his at-bats, is going to be against the lefty. Um, that's just the reality of it. So if, if that explains it to, of, of the thought process. Yeah. yeah, I was, uh, it's one of those things where I understand it because if Mateo can play the outfield, if he adds that, he becomes that super utility and his, you know, what he brings to the team becomes that much more as off the bench weapon. I don't necessarily like starting him. Like we kind of talked about, I would have preferred Kowser being there. But it is one of those things where on paper it makes sense because he's this unbelievable, you know, speedster who can cover all this ground. But we saw, especially in the first inning, yeah, it was a diving play, but I think Mullins makes that play eight out of ten times. The route just wasn't there for me. You know, it wasn't necessarily, okay, you know, he laid out for it and missed it, hit off his glove. Yeah, that happens. You're not going to catch every ball you dive for. But I felt like – he would have saved himself from diving or could have done more of like a slide, not as much of a layout if his angle to the ball was better. Obviously, it's wet and rainy. That's not an ideal spot to be playing the outfield 
when you're usually playing shortstop or second base. So it's hard to rag on him and be like, hey, you needed to do this, especially when he fumbled the ball in the second inning. I know people were getting on him for that. Wet ball, you're not used to playing in the outfield. You know, you're trying to hurry it up to save a run from coming in that doesn't score. So, you know, I think we're all on the same page where we get what, why they're doing it. We get the experiment and what it can bring to the lineup. But ideally, I like my outfielders to play in the outfield and my infielders to play in the infield. And actually, I can. Is that, is that your only thought? Okay. Yeah. Hey, you had a response to that. I, I responded to Crystal. <laughs> So we, we both we both are letting we're both letting Tara and Crystal know the nudes can yeah. can wait. Yeah, like what are we doing here? You know, she, yeah, for all those, yeah, that was uh, that was my funny tweet of the night. I was proud of that one. I can't lie. Yeah, I, I actually saw that too. And then right as I posted the Orioles winning or something, Crystal wanted to hop in and say nude and profile rock. I don't know if you saw that. I had to tell Crystal there's more important <laughs> things in your nudes Dude, and your I two have followers. Lot. I had a bot like they're evolving, man. It's crazy because I had one too. I don't know if you saw it, but I quoted it. It was uh, Christy and um, definitely a oh. bot. Ugh. Oh, typical Orioles. Oh, come back like that with the eyes, like you know, rolling emoji. Can't believe they actually won this one. But hey, James McCann coming in clutch with like a party thing and then hashtag Birdland. But I went to the profile, clear bot, and it's just like evolving. No, they are they're like something about this. They're getting context clues from like the tweets and talk about them. I had one try to talk to me about baseball, like same thing earlier, where they're like, oh, it was on the tarps one. It was like the tarps doing a great job, dot dot yeah. dot. Not can it even get on the field? I was yep. like, this is it's always this a sarcasm. They didn't even they didn't even understand what tarps off truly really meant. I know. I know. Um and John, you know I'm what? Not, I'm not. I'm not wearing my little brother's shirt. Thank you very much. Appreciate ah, that. Buddy. Hey, hey, Don, 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 golf clap, golf clap, or clap it up for Don. Love you, Don. Don C. Clap for those Don. that that Big that are, I'll read it for it. Feel better, Kevin Automatopia. <laughs> much love at Stackhouse. Why is Jackson playing shortstop in Norfolk, guys? He's down there to work on stuff. Keep him at second. Okay, let's talk about that for a second. So the Orioles. Here's a little insider secret. It's not really a secret, but I can tell you what I've known being around the game, how they think. They want to be versatile. I mean, that's why Gunnar Henderson so, was so comfortable, I guess, when he's asked to play third, even though he wants to play short because he feels comfortable there. He's had a lot of more reps down there in the minor leagues. Now, the one he didn't ever feel comfortable with was at second. So the Orioles still want to prepare Jackson to be able to play shortstop because they see a long term that he could. Now, personally – Keep Gunnar Henderson at shortstop for the foreseeable future this year, next year, until we see otherwise. I love Jackson Holiday's ability, but I love Gunnar Henderson at short. But so for Jackson, he's going to get his, his necessary reps. He's going to continue to work there each and every day in practice. He's going to work over there in a lot of games, but that's just where the thought process is. The Orioles don't believe in, hey, you're going to be a one-position guy. Whether you believe in that philosophy or not, that's one thing, but that's just how they do business and that's also why they value the versatility in their DH spot. That's why you're seeing guys DH in different roles because they want to be able to plug and play people in different parts of the of on, on the field and also have the flexibility to give, I don't know, their star catcher some rest to DH and vice versa for some other players. So um, just to throw that out there, and yes, Jackson Holiday, four hit night. Is that true? Well, he's great. And it's, it's not a matter of if, guys. It's it's when he's when he's coming up, and, and you know the one thing of all this I want to touch on. I hate how much crap um, Ramon Arias gets. I get he's not playing well offensively. He's struggling, and that stinks. Austin Hayes doesn't get off to a good start. I get it. Hayes, especially between the two of them, is an all star, and he started slow. But for Ramon Arias, he didn't make any choices. He's going out there. He's still playing solid defense. The batch is not coming together, and I feel like people are kind of taking that frustration out, which I understand, but that is not a Ramon Arias problem, okay? So I just want to throw that out there. Um, yeah, that's, that's, my, that's, my, that's my piece on that. Yeah, I mean, you do feel bad for guys like Ramon Arias because, like you said, he's not the guy that's out there necessarily replacing Jackson Holiday. It wasn't his decision. so. 
when we have guys like that, especially because we've talked about it a few times, what makes Aria so special is his ability to come off the bench and be comfortable in that role, knowing I'm not going to play every single day. You know, and usually once the season gets going, when his number is called in moments, you know, whether it's a spot start here at short, at second, at third, he's going to bring great defense, and then he's also going to bring a valuable bat to the lineup. We're not seeing that right now, and I think it – obviously with Jackson Holiday not coming up, like you said, people are going to point at Urias and Kemp and say, well, they're not doing well. Why is Jackson not playing here instead? Because Kemp and Urias aren't playing, period. I mean, they're not getting – that many at bats to warrant that Jackson Holiday coming up and seeing on the bench right now is the right move. Now, eventually, we've been saying it all along. Jesus, Silent J is just killing it. How is this okay. twenty-five to eight? That's more than the Panthers scored in a in like a month. Did he hit another one? Oh, he just hit a grand slam. So that's that's is that his fourth home run or the third home run of the day? Oh my uh, god! I didn't know we were on that. I don't, that I don't, even, I don't even know. Dude, Norby. And you know, remember, remember? Let me see. Yeah. Norby, uh, Stowers, and him all had three home runs, and now Stowers has three. Norby has yeah, Kirsten. three. Kirsten. Also, I want to point. I want to point Kirsten. this out here because I'm seeing comments here. Um, is High too loyal with who with to the boys who suffered with him in the bad years? I want people to know Brandon Hyde obviously has a say on this team, but it's also the conversation he has with the front office and guys like Mike Elias, right? So this isn't a high just saying, hey, where I want this guy. I mean, Mike Elias has a lot of say in in this roster, right? It, he he constructed it. He's the, the GM of the team. Mm -hmm. And then Brandon Hyde will have his say. But the other part I will say – these players, what's exciting is there's so much talent down here and people aren't used to seeing them playing at this level. And you're right. A lot of those guys could be MLB ready right now, but you can't discredit also at the big league level. And there's no guarantee that all those guys are going to be all-stars at the next level. I think that they're all tremendous players. They very well could be, 100%. You know, but I want people to remember, too, this is great context, actually. Ryan Mountcastle was the MVP of AAA when he played his full season there. Pretty damn good. Hit over 300, hit a lot of home runs. And when he got to the big leagues, he had some up and down moments, and then he hit 30-some jacks. But then people were saying, well, wait a minute. Is Mountie the right fit? You know what I mean? Like people were saying he chases too much. And that's There's evolutions. Was, yeah, that was the same thing that kind of happened with Adley and Gunner, too, at the beginning of their careers up in the pros. It's, it's bound to happen to any player. Um, there, there's not – I don't know how many young, talented players you can name that don't go through some sort of slump early in their career when they get brought up. But um, I think people just want to see those players. I know, I know that. I mean, the difference between AAA and and the pros, it, they're mu it, it's much different. But for fans, I think to see these guys just hitting the cover off the ball right now, day in and day out down in AAA, they're just like, give them a chance, bring them up. Let them let them fail here, and if they do, not not like obviously they want to see them do well. But I'm saying like if they get up here and they fail, that's one thing. But let them do it up here, um, at the right. But but uh, you know, many people have the point of it's the roster so full right now. Who are you going to move around? And it's I told Michael Elias at opening day, I was like, I would hate to be in your position because you have the tough decisions to make. You have to make the decisions that. Not not a ton of people. Like obviously, Twitter is going to make their own decisions. That's that's just like you know we've seen it all the time. But Mike Elias wants to make the best decisions at the at the right point in time. Um, for this team that, that is going to put the best roster out there on the field at that point in time. So I, I know it's you know fans are getting impatient with the players that are down there. They want to see them up, but I, I really truly believe in due time it's going to happen. And the best roster for the Orioles is going to be up there. Um. It's it's not a matter of when it's a matter or not a matter of if it's a matter of when it's going to happen. Sorry for it. Yeah. Also, um, about to throw this out here. We have a, I see a lot of guys commenting and community. By the way, 
if you want to talk a lot more shop like these conversations, we got a great community that's being built talking a lot of sports in our Discord. Yeah. We're going to post that Discord link here in a second. Zach, you got a point balls. you want to follow up with Rock? Wanna, yeah, that's for the best, in. I think. Yeah, thanks. But thanks. we appreciate you. Hey, Rock. <laughs> hey, go loosen up, man. Be Not loose. Where? Don't be so let's, tight. Let's not bring up the, the loosening up and the this. Oh, we that. already did. Yeah, I know. We probably oh, we did. That did. was just ridiculous. I, no more of that. It's not It's not ridiculous. It was just ridiculous. Lo- loosen up. Yeah. Loose you know, the glass. You're, you're, you're not board. ready for Rip After Dark. You are I not am. ready. You are not made for Rip After Dark. I'm so ready. When you heard Rip stories about Rip After Dark. Yeah, you you couldn't story. sleep for days. I've heard these stories that I shouldn't have heard, but, you know, it is what it is. All, All right, right, good to see I'll you. See You're you a good kid. See ya. Uh, hold on, hold on. I removed him. I was, I, I'm sorry. Oh, he just banned Joe before he left. Oh, he did. <laughs> he just banned Joe. Just to say he did. Oh, rock. Yeah. Oh, my God. Get out of here. Uh, something I want to bring up, though, because I've been seeing, weirdly, weirdly, some people were, maybe concerned i'm not i don't think this was a major concern by a lot of people but saying adley rutschman wasn't looking great at the plate the number of hard hit balls that adley had that were right at defender so far this year was stupid and the man is still batting 333 i just checked because i wanted to make sure it's it's one of those things where when the lights are the brightest adley rutschman's a guy i want up at the plate because like we just talked about with ryan mountcastle in the ninth inning, a massive walk to start the rally. Adley's a guy that he doesn't necessarily have to get a hit to make his impact. And we saw that once again. What was it? The eighth inning draws a walk again after, you know, he gets the uh, – not rally started because he got stranded, but he got the first hit of the game. He's kind of the only guy for a while that had any sort of beat on Reagan's. And then he gets up again and he's able – to work the count, draw a walk, and it's really just impressive every time. The more you watch, at just his approach to the plate, I feel like not everyone appreciates the way they should because the way he views the game at the plate and is able to go with pitches, foul ones off that he doesn't want, and there are times where it, it kind of hurts him that he knows the strike zone as well as the umps, and you see a lot of times – he will get caught on that ball just outside the strike zone because he knows the zone so well and he thinks it's a ball even though it is. But you live and die with that with Adley because of how well he conducts his at-bats. He's always going to have a professional at-bat. And there are just times where you rarely see Adley go up there and you're like, oh, he didn't have it that at-bat. He was fooled. So many times you go up there and even if he's not getting a hit, you're like, he just missed one or two. He's on it. You know, it's very hard to fool Adley Rutschman. Yeah. And also, too, to give you, like, we're, it's very easily, I think Adley, Adley's one of the best hitters on the team. I told people this before. Adley is not a player that's going to wow you with, like, oh my goodness, you hit the ball yeah. 460 feet. Oh, like, you're, you're physically so much more talented. Adley, Adley's just not bad at anything. That's what makes him so good. So if that yeah. makes sense, he's 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 very good behind the plate, calls a good game, can help control the run game, great eye at the plate, uh, can hit for contact, can hit for some power, but it's not anything where you're going like, oh my goodness. He's just what you call the all-around player. That's why to me he's like the Buster Posey. Has that effect on the team. He can do everything. Really talented player. Um, what was I going to say? Yeah, oh, I want to talk a little bit about this is so early in the season, by the way. We're is it six games now? Six games in. Yeah. Any every averages can change just like that, and wow. I mean, just like that. So if you see someone hitting uh, one thirty three, I mean, I'll, we'll look at the last last year. Some guys can have bad months, plural, or a bad month, singular, and then they can have the best weeks or a best month. It's baseball. It's extremely hard. The best players in the world are able to limit their slumps more and be more steady. And the players that are more inconsistent, that's the thing with like Corey Mateo where he got knocked, is you looked unbelievable the first month, and each month it kept going downhill statistically. So that's the point I want to bring up. And for Austin Hayes is specifically the guy I wanted to bring up because, again, Hayes is another guy that also just like – just he is a very good hitter. 
and I understand that people go, he swings it too much, but I want people to understand what he's capable of doing. Last year, when he got going at some point, later on, he ended up hitting 312, 310, 326 in three straight months going into the All-Star game. Yeah, he had a brutal month of July that was 162, but the other months were really good. And, and I'm just pointing that out. It's not – that's why Hayes deserves the credit. It's not six games that's going to define us. Now, if he has a bad month, month and a half, then people are going to go, wait a minute, let's start talking about things. And these prospects are going to keep knocking at the door because they say, hey, we're ready. Put us on the team. But that's just the reality of the situation. Do you want to start answering this question, Kevin? Or um, Zach? Yeah. yeah. I'll answer Kevin's question. So, Kevin, uh, do you guys think Sowers – we see Sowers this year. I'm having trouble thinking who he replaces on the roster. Unfortunately, unless there's an injury, which I hope not, it is going to be extremely hard for Kyle Stowers to find his way on this team. And I, it sucks because I'm not sure there's much he can do about it because if the other guys like Kerstead continue to produce – he gets the nod over Stowers. Then you see guys like Connor Norby, obviously Jackson Holiday. I think Norby, they tried him out, Rip. Do they? Are they still trying him out in the outfield? I know for a little bit they were giving him – they try to put everyone in the corner outfield at some point, I feel like. But yeah. it it is extremely hard right now if everyone stays healthy for me to look at the roster and say this is where Kyle Stowers fits on this team. And maybe it is something where all, he needs a change of scenery. You know, it, it could be a situation where he is going to ball out at the major league level, but that might not be here just because of where, boom, locked on Ravens, more like locked on the Norfolk Tides. Brilliant, Kevin. So it is It is one of those situations where it is hard to look at Kyle Stowers in the grand scheme of things and in the overall picture and say, yeah, these are the guys he replaces without someone going down or getting traded. Yeah, also I want to throw this out too. Uh, and this is no knock to the Charlotte Knights. The Charlotte Knights do not have a pitcher like Cole Reagans on their team. They do not have a yeah. Michael Walker. You know, and so they have some talented players, just like every AAA team, like the Orioles have Cade Povich, who looked great the other night, but they don't have the depth. So when we talk about all of that, there's some talented players, and when you have MLB-ready guys, when they've proven everything at that level, they're going to have success, and you're seeing that right now. And I hope that – and this is the hard thing. Is I want every single guy that is in the minors at any point, any team, to live out their dream to get to the big leagues. The reality is in the business, they're not all going to. And then you have to look at where your team is at. If the Orioles were a team that wasn't in contention and this was four years ago, three, you know, four, yeah, four years ago, I'd say all these prospects that are right there, might already be on the team, yeah. and, and this would be a way different look. But when you have the number one run producer on your team and Anthony Santander the last two years, who's averaged 30 home runs, Cedric Mullins, when he plays, is one of your most productive offensive players and is arguably your best defensive player. Then you have Austin Hayes, who is an all-star, and when he's healthy, has been a very, very, very solid outfielder in the big leagues. You know, it, it makes – that those are the points. And then again, people want to look at Mar Ramon Arias and Mateo and keep this in mind. The younger prospects here, like Mayo, Holiday, um, Norby, even Norby is the one where I think he, I, I want to see him get the chance because yeah. I also think he'd have to live with not being the everyday guy. You don't want Jackson or Mayo to not be the everyday guy. And you go, oh, wait a minute, you'll just plug him in. The Orioles, and this is, this is what, this, again, this isn't my opinion. This is what I uh, observed. They probably think, well, Kobe, we don't want Kobe Mayo to play third. We want him to play more first base. Are you going to take Ryan Mountcastle out of the lineup and not have Ryan Mountcastle play first? He's the best. He's going to be, a, 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 at this rate, another gold glove finalist. Yeah. And he's Matt, it smacks the shit out of the ball. <laughs> so there's a lot of things there to keep in mind. I just want to point that out. Oh, my goodness. Ooh, unique New York. Sorry. Can you still yeah. hear me, Zach? Yeah, I can say you, and I agree. I think Nor Norby's that guy I really want to see get a chance because he's just such a great hitter all around. You know, obviously we've all seen, feels like every single prospect right now coming up has incredible pop. And obviously as a righty with that left field wall, it's not as valuable, I think, the Orioles to the Orioles as a Kerstead or a Jackson Holiday who's a lefty. 
But, man, every time you look up, Connor Norby is just putting on a show with the bat. And, you know, you just said it. He might be a guy that is okay with not playing every single day. You know, we're, we want Jackson Holiday five out of six games he's got to play. Kobe Mayo, five out of six games he's got to play. It's only when you want to rest them that you don't want him out there. But for a guy like Connor Norby, maybe he is someone that you can bring up and you're saying, hey, like they're doing with Kowser right now, you're going to get hopefully an at-bat every game if the situation arises. And then you'll start every few games to get your feet wet. But at the moment, we can't hand you a job and you be there consistently with the current roster. Yeah. And, and again, like that's just the reality that we are faced with and, and that this team's faced with. So if people don't understand that, that's that's the what's the right way to put it? It's the context of it, right? Yeah. Um, and also I'm looking at these numbers and I need to look this up. So it's 25 to 11 tides over the nights in AAA down on the farm. Um, for context, the Carolina Panthers in the last two weeks of the season uh, combined for zero points in football in the last two games. And the Tides have 25 runs. Actually, the Carolina Panthers, if I'm looking at this correctly, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 of their games, they did not go over 25 points. And in a baseball game, the Tides put up 25. Holy shirts and pants, Zach. Hey, if you're new to the channel, hit that like and subscribe button, by the way. And yeah, they do have Jadavion Cloudy. Gavin, you're right. But he got paid and he's going closer to home. Kids just always locked on. Just an absolute machine. Oh, well, Q, I'm so sorry, Q, 26. Uh, man, we can't even keep up with all this score. Do the recap. Man, you know what? You know what? Cancel the stream. Turn it off right yeah, now. Yeah, cancel. Honestly, um, we probably have to look this up, but I would not be surprised if this is true. If the Tides have scored more runs this season than about 10 MLPT. Oh, uh, maybe not combined, but definitely have scored more runs tonight than some MLB teams have all year. Yeah, for for sure. And, and again, if you're new to the channel, hit that like and subscribe button. If you're tuning in from X, we've had a lot of people tuning in from X as well. Hit that follow button for at Zach Bollinger 18 at Ryan Ripkin. We do this every Monday, Thursday, whenever something crazy happens like tonight. Uh, we do sprinkle in on Sundays. We will preview the Pirates and Orioles tomorrow night. We will have some other spicy topics that are not Orioles related, but we promise you tune in for the show. You are going to get your daily dose. But if you come to the stream and you're like, well, wait a minute, why are they talking about something happened in football, basketball, or, or something happened in baseball? Well, one, we like those things. We're going to talk about it. But we promise it's our guarantee on the show. We are going to talk about extensively what's going on with this Baltimore Orioles team. And it's a Rocco hit in the face, smack in the face if we don't. That's the guarantee. Yeah. I mean, Kyle, you, you know, um, Crystal had to know. You know, can we pull that? I'm going to find that tweet. I'm going to find that. Tweet. Yeah, I just saw. I didn't even see you put that out. That was hilarious. I did just count it up, though. Tonight, the Norfolk Tides have scored as many or more runs than exactly 50% of Major League Baseball teams. 15. Also found out the Mets have only scored eight runs this year. What? Am I missing something? What happened there? Uh, but, yeah, that's a tough look. For uh, well, great look for Norfolk, but yeah, hey, Spider. Oh, no. no, we're not. We're, no, we're done with that one. We yeah, will imagine was... we're gonna break that. We're gonna break that down the big screen, too. We haven't even done that. Yet. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's coming. Uh, yeah, this is uh, hey, you know what, Don? He's the man of the people, the man of the Ryan Ripken show community stream with our regulars like Joe and uh, and Rick. Been there from the beginning. We're seeing a lot of people that are just flowing in constantly. The Cube, Tori, all these people have joined the Discord too. The Discord's in the comments here right now. So check it out. Hit that like and subscribe. It's free to do it. I promise it won't kill you. Not that I know It's of. worth it. I well, would say yeah. it's worth it. You know. Ima imagine, I know I keep saying Rip After Dark, but I, I, I have to realize we should probably do the Rip After Dark like separate from the stream. Oh, Kevin, great. Fantastic. That's awesome, Kevin. That's fantastic. Let me share my screen about my tweet. There it is. So. Um, 
as you guys can see right there, uh, Crystal said my nudes are in the profile. And I, I read or I said, Crystal, there are way more important things. The bird just came back and stole a series. You know, Facts. that's great. Sometimes and all. you have to love. You know what? And I, I think Crystal has a whopping two followers, and I get it. She's a bot, but not on my channel, not on my tweet. No. No bots save not, when the Orioles win. Hey, and no, no bots save it. And, and hey, Gay, again, tell us where you guys are, what's going on, yo, what's what's good, Mackie, how we doing? Um, tell us where you're tuning in from. I saw Kurt out in Boise, Idaho. Yeah, my brother I do have to. Yeah, yeah, you I do. do have to get in the Discord more. That's all my hand up. Yeah, don't be a tight ass like Rocco. Get in the Discord more. Um, it's <laughs> this is this is so funny. <laughs> Yeah. Adit says uh, UVA basketball is probably looking at the Norfolk Tide score and thinking 25 is a lot of points and runs. Yeah, they probably are. What a straight UVA basketball, but I'm here for it, you know? No, we're here. We are all here for it. Um, I saw hey, some other notes. Ben. Hell yeah, Ben oh. Bismarck. I saw a Dover. We're all over the place. Uh, um, Oh, Joe's saying, are we doing 7K? We get a 90-mile-an-hour fastball to the ribs for Zach. Should I just get Bauman to come on over and be like, hey, Mike, screw 90. Hit Zach with a 95 right in the rib. Or smooth, an, we, don't, we, don't, we don't need to have it hit you in the rib. We can just have it hit you in the ass cheek. Just right up there, yeah. square you up. You'll be fine. Ah, my favorite place on earth, Fed Hill, Baltimore. Hell yeah, Matt. Hell yeah, Matt. Um, do, 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 do. Yeah, Matt, we got to get together at some point. We, guys, we go down to Pickles. I, I go to the work for 105.7 The Fan for pregame. Zach goes there to just wreak havoc. But we're both it's down there for different reasons. It is. It is. Um, yeah, yeah, we'll, actually, have, we'll wanna, have a good time with you. Want to comment about this real quick. Kowser is living up to the height. I'm not upset about that uh, ninth inning strikeout. And that was just a brilliant pitch. Oh, get here. I got you. Uh, that was just a brilliant pitch. You know, late. It was a good count. First pitch fooled him completely. I'm gonna be honest. Completely fooled him. Uh, you could tell he was a little bit, kind of, you know, stressed out. But I think that first pitch, you know, swing through it. It's in the dirt, and immediately he was kind of like, whew, like it kind of almost relieved him. They went right back to it, slider in the dirt, lays off of it, and then fights 2-2, two -two, takes one at the knees. You would like for him to swing, but, man, at the end of the day, the pitcher's yet paid two. He's one of the top closers in the league, puts it on the black. It's it's tough to look at Kowser and go, you needed to do more. You know, it's a low pitch that touches the black. It's going to happen to you. O's win anyway. He actually gets the hit to kind of start the run in the uh, eighth inning, so – you know, I, I agree. He is living up to the hype. Yep. Yeah. Good stuff. And um, yeah, I uh, hopefully. Yeah, yeah, no, never mind. We'll talk about some other things in a little bit here. But Kowser, Kowser, no matter what, in my mind, it's a really tough position to come off the bench and to be able to just be called upon. And for him to do that and wait in his turn, being patient, make an impact. He started that rally. In the um, in the eighth, which I thought was great. So, Kowser's done a lot of good things, and I hope that he continues to be patient. He works hard, and again, it's just being ready. I think honestly, he learned a lot from that last year. And I told people this before: when you're in the minors, you have to go from being. Um, sorry, I'm losing my train of thought. Here it is: you have to go from being the guy in the minors to being a guy. And being asked whatever role your team's going to be. Not everyone can be the guy all the time. I think Kowser can be an, a, a top talent player, no doubt about it. But what he's being asked to do right now is be ready when he's called upon. And that's extremely hard. But I think he learned more about that last year, if that makes sense to people. Uh, and and, he, and he, he's he been busting his ass. There's no doubt about it. And Brad, um, yeah, tough night for Big Mike. Uh, you know, it, it really that one, that, that slider's nasty. I mean, Mike's got disgusting stuff. That's why I'm such a Big Mike believer i've seen it i've he's been my teammate for every single year that i was with the orioles from 17 to 21 uh really close with him uh, the thing for him tonight when he gave up the the home run johnson was just he fell behind 
two on the count with two sliders in the dirt, or you know, sorry, one one low, then slider away, fastball fouls it off, and then it's a three one count. Yeah, Garcia is going to be aggressive, and he's been swinging the bat really well this series. Gets a good pitch, drives it, bada bing, bada bang. It's a homer, right? But then Mike comes back, battles, um, goes right after Bobby Witt Jr. and throws a disgusting changeup to yuck, and shows you what he's capable of. So um, that's just the reality of it. But again, this Orioles pitching staff deserves uh, a lot more. And yeah, why am I so distracted tonight? I don't know, Houston. I don't know. I don't have my tequila with me. Uh, I'm dealing with Zach. Rocco blew up the stream. I, I don't know. There's so many different variations that go into all this. I think in a lot of ways, none of us, you know, was, hey, we'll say it. none of us really expected to be here. Uh, we did not think that, you know, especially after the first seven innings, you know, seven and a half innings, wasn't thinking we were going to get a walk-off stream. But here we are. This is why we do it, because – when it the hype is through the roof, when it get those moments happen that you go, I got to tell somebody about this. I got to talk to somebody about this. So we're here for. That's why we love interacting with everyone like this. I really love the comment section. So keep comments coming because this is what we do it for. The walk off streams, man. They're, these are becoming quickly my favorite. Yeah, I I love them. And here's a little. Why don't we just move into a sh little rip after dark here for a second? I'll drop a story here. No, I don't want to line drive off Justin from Justin Tucker right to the to the uh, the golden spot or whatever you want to call it down there. I don't, I don't want to get hit down there because I've already been hit down there on a baseball field. Um, here's a little rip after dark story. We're playing in Hagerstown. I'm playing for the Delmarva Shorebirds in 2018, and. I get to play. I played for Hagerstown, and it was it was good to see some familiar faces. Blah blah blah. I actually on the play, a couple things happened. I hit a piss rod line drive right back up the middle, and I actually made contact with the catcher's glove. So it should have been a catcher's interference, or they would have called it if it wasn't a base hit, right? But you let it play out. That's the rule. So I hit the I hit the catcher's glove. Hit a line drive. The catcher's glove causes my bat to slightly break. That's part one. The runner from second is going around to score, and I'm seeing that the center fielder is going to come up to throw home. And I'm like, oh, your boy is taking second. We're going to be on our way. And I'm going to second base. The catcher comes up, realizes there's no play at the plate, grabs it, throws a seed down the second, and I super Mario slide and have my hand up. Where do you think I get drilled, Zach? That's I'm probably not the spot you want to get drilled. I got How'd drilled. You feel? Oh, dude, I tumbled. I rolled over almost through. My voice raised significantly higher. And then the umpire's like, oh, a well, good thing you got your cup on. And I went, nope, I'm dh but I'm never not wearing a cup dh -ing. And I know the second baseman, he's laughing and he can't pronounce the, the – uh, the P and Ripken, it's Rican. He's like, oh, Rican, like, Poppy, you okay? Like, uh, Garcia, Luis, no, not okay. I need, I need some Advil, I need some ice, and I need about six shots of tequila now. Um, but I got the RBI, I got the hit, and that's just like a sprinkle. That's not even like a fully rip after dark, but to let you know how much that hurt, um, that reminded me I will always wear a cup in any circumstance, no matter what, because only me would get drilled on a throwdown trying to take an extra base. At least it wasn't Hunter Renfro. Ooh. Oh my goodness, about, dude! Yeah. Dude, he threw he threw he throws at ninety. Renfro throws the ball ninety nine off the mound. I did see that um, at uh, summer ball too. They're like, "Hey, Hunter, get on the mound." And um, yeah, ah, good kids, good good kids. Well, if you're new to the channel, hit that like and subscribe yeah. button. Uh, Ryan Ripken show breaking breaking live stream episode post game. We're, we're behaving for the most part, but we do this every Monday, Thursday. We have some big guests coming up. So tomorrow, Pirates breakdown. We're going to talk about some spicy topics. I saw that you know we might even talk about that Angel Reese is going to the WNBA. Uh, March Madness is still uh, moving on, but we are going to get into our baseball. And we have two baseball guests tomorrow night, ladies and gentlemen. Two baseball guests. One don't want to probably get trust me. Yeah, one gets Birdland all riled up. The other one, I think, doesn't doesn't give that reaction, but I know a lot of people do enjoy 
his coverage of the team. So I would, I would almost, the- I was gonna say, I would almost go to say it's one of Birdland's most loved members, and the member that gets them the most riled up. So, trust me, you are not going to want to miss tomorrow's episode. We're gonna have it all. We're gonna have it all. Both sides of the spectrum from the Orioles. The one that gets fans all fired up and the one that people just absolutely love. So do not miss it. No, no doubt about that. And we also then have another guest lining up on Monday that I think you guys would even recognize a little bit more to say the least. Mm -hmm. And I think that everyone always is interested when he sends out a message on social media. Um, We'll tip. We'll tip it. Oh. Oh. Um, you know what? The real question, though, I did see that. Kevin, the real hot topic. Who won the hot dog race? I'm going to my know. I'm going to the I'm, I'm going to the Twitter account right now. The people need to know. Catch up one. And, and catch up time... catch up's been vindicated. Yeah. That was the first time catch ups won and the Orioles have won in the same day. Huh? That hey, ketchup uh gets a pass. Pet, ke- it was getting real close. If ketchup would have won and the Orioles didn't win, that would be when other condiments win it. It's three and zero. When ketchup wins it, it's zero and three. It, ketchup fans, there would be ketchup would have been on the hot seat. Let's call it like it is. There, it would have been talks of if he deserved to be at that level. Yeah, I mean, thank you, mustard. It's all mustard. You know, oh, 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 well, we got a couple of comments here. Brian, first time. Hey, round of applause yeah. for Brian here or snaps snaps for Brian. Yeah, appreciate you, Brian. It's way it's a little bit harder when I have all this going on. Yeah. And when we're in studio, uh, it's a lot. Uh, I think, well, hey, maybe we do get a Ryan or Hearn on the show. Oh, bring that up. I think that's what he's I think that's what Matt's saying. Yeah. Hey. We'll get Kevin, some guys, but yes. What? Oh, my God. Kevin's thing Relish is robbed. Hell, yeah. Hey, go O's, go Brian. O's. Yeah, I forgot we didn't have Kevin. There it is. Rel- Relish robbed. Um, Kevin, uh, we did talk to Pickles. You will be put into a, a human hot dog uh, suit. But instead of actually it being a Relish costume, you, in fact, will actually have Relish on you. We're, we're putting just, relish on you. No we're covering. Shit. We're we're gonna we're gonna absolutely hose Rocco and ketchup. I mean, there it is. That's what we need. Yes, Antonio Brown's coming on the show. Could you imagine? Oh no! I don't think no. I don't think that would that would be an interest. That might be our last episode. That's for sure. We keep saying it might be our last post game episode. That for sure would be our last post game episode. Um. You should put all the Ryans on the show. Can you? Can you imagine? Can That's you imagine? Really, an idea. Oh, uh, we, we. Ooh, ooh. That would be. That would be awesome. Hey, you know what's crazy right now is that we're just. I'm just showing in like my work, uh, like gym space in my place. But we actually have a studio where we actually look more put together. But our last streams have been so caliente hot. Which we found out, oh God, which one's the hottest? If it's red hot, white hot, blue hot, yellow hot, someone so commented true. on that. Yeah, I think it was white hot. I think they said white hot. Uh, if you remember so, from last episode what the hottest color is, let us know. Yeah, please, uh, please, please. We would have to bring Ryan McKenna on just for vibes. I could get Mac. Oh, I could talk to Mac. He's a good kid. I love Mac. Um, yeah. One of my former teammates a- as well. We're having a Ryan roundtable. It's only right Ryan McKenna gets to join. Yeah. Oh, Matt. Oh. Oh. Well, I feel bad. Actually, it's crazy. I haven't had a chance to actually meet Ryan or her, and a lot of the guys love him in the clubhouse. Uh, obviously, gotten to know a lot of the guys. I tell people I probably know, have met, or been around, played with, with probably like 90% of the, the guys that are on the roster or down or like that are doing well down in AAA. So have a pretty good pulse on them. So, but Ryan O'Hearn was not one of them yet. 
either was James McCann, but now I feel like I need James McCann. Need need to talk to yeah. James McCann because we talked talk to Dean Kramer. Dean's one of my guys, Bauman, Wells, um, even the position players, you know, Adley, um, I don't know, who am I blanking on? Cedric, like all those guys are like, yeah, James McCann. James McCann is the man uh, and really, really sets a tone for this team and brings a leadership that no one even knows about. Joe, I appreciate every time you make this joke that <laughs> and, and, and even though even though it's a thousand percent wrong, it's a thousand percent right because you said it. We'll, we'll, we'll just we'll, we'll we'll speak it into existence, even though. You know, we had we got rid of one lefty Ryan, so they had to get another, and now here we are. You know, I that's why it's like I transferred all of mine. That's why I just hit like dog shit my last <laughs> year is because I wanted to save it for the next Ryan to hit well. Yeah, and uh, Joe, yeah, I'll hit him with a woo pig suey when you get there. I actually had fun, fun story, Joe. This is Joe will appreciate this. I was like 17. And uh, went to a baseball game with my friends, like one of those Friday night games, playing against the Tigers. And, of course, we had to go to the bullpen and heckle, you know, the opposing team's starting pitcher. And we get back there, and we're, like, right behind the catcher, and it's James McCann. So we all started looking up, like, what where he was from and stuff, and we saw Arkansas. So we just started, like, shitting on Arkansas uh, baseball and football and everything. And he actually appreciated the chirp so much. He thought they were creative enough that he uh, he gave us each a ball. He like we we didn't give like you know Sue ones. Like I was looking up like you know who'd he strike out against, like stuff like that. Like I was creative with it, and uh, he enjoyed them enough. I will say, it was during one of the rough years, and I told him, don't throw the ball to Manny Machado. I said that's the only thing you have to do. You'll win the game as long as you don't pitch to Machado. Only run of the game was a solo shot by Manny Machado. And I DM James McCann after on Instagram and said, hey, I'm the kid who told you not to uh, throw to Manny Machado, told you so. And he never responded. But I'm sure he saw it and was like, I should listen to him. You, you, yeah, never, oh, you probably never thought ceased. that. Yeah, you probably thought that no. story was more important now. No, it's just, just, I just called my shot. That's all that I took away. You did. You know, you know what is very important, though, is that Houston making this very nice observation. Is it me or does Kevin Kevin's mustache make him look like the V for Vendetta mask? <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, God. Now, you also, know, you know, Houston, okay. This was like four, five years ago, six years ago, not last year. Hey, you know what we need? Zach and hey, Kevin, go. Can you go find me the photo of you, uh, Michael Myers, standing behind me during the Jackson Holiday um, situation? It, or the breaking news? Yeah, that's what it was. Can you get that for me? I have to make a meme. Thank you. Appreciate you, Kevin. You're a good kid. Um, gosh, so many, so many times, so many stories, so many good activities. If you're still tuned into Rhyme Two, hit that like and subscribe button. Uh, Breaking news stream because we were like, yeah, screw it. People are feeling good. Vibes are high. That's why I'm wearing the glasses. I don't actually wear these every single day. I only wear or I wear them like 22 hours of the day. Yeah. You know, he does sleep in them because I'm a Mick asshole. But, you know, um, but honestly, it's all about having a vibe, having a good time. Baseball is hard enough. I think also what I realized in this venture, I want to have more fun. You know, it's about. Not stressing as much with all this stuff. I stressed enough as I played, believe me. And so that's why I try to be a calming presence, relax, have a good time, and give you guys, try to give you guys observations on what I see and talk about it. And then Zach can be the one that loses his mind, but he also can have some very good points too. So that's where we can balance each other out. That's where it makes sense. Yeah, I, I definitely I text Ryan my overreaction some games, and he's like, okay. But you know what? That's why we're here. That's why we're here. I can give the uh, overreactions, and then I'll give I give the knee jerk reactions that the rest of the fan base gives, and then uh, Ryan gets to uh, calm down both me and the fan base. So it's good. It works out. Uh good stuff. Hey, I like that everyone's really on the the Ryan thing. Council of Ryan's. <laughs> I it would actually be hilarious if we just did a show and mountains. it's just you interviewing. You, it, like it's just you interviewing like if we can even get it in person so that we can physically have a round table like that would be ideal that'd be incredible yeah 
It really would. And it, Alan, that's a good point. Sports sports are, are supposed to be fun, even though you sometimes want to yeah. die inside. You know, when the Ravens lost to the AFC Championship, their mm-hmm. sports are fun. Um, yeah. Was I upset? No. <laughs> yes. But but in all honesty, you're right. It, it's It brings people together. This is why the community comes together. We like to talk about things that are sports-related, not sports-related, but it is true. You know, but some of my best moments or memories of playing actually were after games, whether we lost by like I can't tell you how many times I've been taken behind the woodshed like the Knights uh, are by the Norfolk Tides right now. And we're sitting there after the game having a bottle and being like, all right, pass that pass that puppy around because it has been a rough go. And there's only one way to get by this horrific night. Uh, but then you have those moments, too, where the game's so well, something crazy happens, and you're sitting there like, how the hell did we do this? That was amazing. Yeah. And then you talk to people about it. The people make the memories. The people make the community. So uh, that's 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 the motto I'm trying to live by, uh, especially after I used, to, I used to be really hard on myself earlier on. And, and the expectations for me personally as a Ripken um, it bothered me as far as I felt like I was disappointing. For a while, I was disappointing others, but more importantly, I was disappointing myself. And when I look back, I'm like, I really cared so much about little things that it made me sometimes, when I didn't catch myself, lose the power of the moment. Lose the power yeah. of the moment. And so. like you said, it's it's the memories. It's these are the moments that make sports great. It's it's being able to have an impromptu show. You know, because James McCann and the Orioles just walked it off and we're like, screw it, vibes are too high. We got to talk about this. And then we get to come in here with currently a, us and 145 of our best friends on YouTube, at least currently. So just talking ball, that's what it's all about. That's what makes Orioles baseball, it's what makes sports special is being able to have these moments where the whole game, it looked like it was just going to be a miserable day. It looked like we we're going into the off day three and three. And then they pull it off, and then you get, we get this. Yes. And then we get this. The boys, they're buzzing. Never give in. Never say die. For all the ones that waited the five hours, six hours at the game, legendary people. That like that's true dedication. True, true dedication. Don't forget that. Don't forget that. So, who? Take it. Do we do we do we call it a night, Zach? Do we just yeah? Say, screw I think it? we uh, we uh, I think what a stream over an hour and fifteen minutes. I mean, this uh, didn't expect it, but these are the best streams. They they really are. And imagine, but we do have one scheduled for tomorrow to preview. Who should we talk about tomorrow? Who, who should I break down tomorrow? We we do we bring to- in mm, hmm. I mean, there's O'Neal Cruz. We got Brian Hayes. Ooh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Brian Hayes, Brian Reynolds. But then also for the Orioles, yeah. do we do like, hey, damn, James McCann's pretty damn good. Should we break down James McCann's game last night or tonight? We might. I think we have. I think we might. I think we might have to. Deal. Twist my arm. All right, everyone. If you are new, or well, we could do Adley too. Oh, so many decisions. Ooh. Well, we got a lot of time. Tune in to, to find this. out. Tune, Tune in to find, find out. out. But for all you guys, before we get out of here, hit that like and subscribe button for us on um, YouTube. Hit that follow button on X for at Zach Bollinger 18, at Ryan Ripken for myself. And if you guys need to catch up on the Ryan Ripken show, we do have an audio version out. Of course, we want you to be here on the stream with us because you can see our reaction, see what's going on, and you can interact with us in the moment. But if you can't, and we don't want you driving and watching, Go listen to the audio version and let us know how we're doing. Like, review it. If you think it's terrible, great. If you think it's great, even better. But we appreciate your guys' support, um, and uh, we will go from there. So, Zach, final words, parting words? I can. I will never live down these typos that I've had the past two days. <laughs> it has been brutal. <laughs> I've, I've been just – I've been ahead of myself, and – then I'm getting called out on Twitter, which makes it that much worse. It's bringing attention to it. So I don't really, I hate that Twitter, like I'll delete it to repost and like the right one. And it'll keep that one up on everyone's feed. So it'll be like three straight of my deleted typos. And I'm just getting called out left and right. Hate to see it, but you love to see these streams and you love to see the Orioles win. 
Yep. Love to see it. Hate hate to see the typos. Love to see some GTs with, with the great community. So, everyone, we'll see you tomorrow night for the next Ryan Ripken Show. But as always, have a day, have a night, and go Birds, baby. Go Birds.